Hi, this is Brandon. Today we're going to render in Substance Painter and export out those images to put in a final composition suitable for a portfolio. To render in Substance Painter, we're going to go to this iRay icon up here. And if you notice here, it says rendering already. The iterations are climbing and counting. Max time, 10 seconds, is preset. And if you wait just a moment, this will say done. And I could just save out my render as is. Save it where you like it, rename it. If you save it as a PNG, it will have a transparent background. Any other file type will not work. Save it as a PNG for a transparent background. However, I'm going to do a few things before we save this out. Now these tabs over here, I can dock them. Texture set list, I don't really need to work with right now. But the display settings, I'm going to dock that. And the shader settings, I'm going to dock that. Render settings back to the front. Now under my shader settings, I don't want any lighting set up on this at all currently. I want to eliminate as many shadows as I can for the stylized purpose. Now this particular dagger has not been fully painted. I just have a few basic colors in here for demonstration purposes. I don't have any emission, so I'm going to turn this down. I don't have any edge color, so I'm not going to worry about that. The sheen, I'm going to leave off. The index of refraction, I believe this starts somewhere up in the middle adds all of the shine on it. I'm also going to take that down. Subsurface scattering, I don't need that either. It's, I don't have any transparency or glass or refractions to worry about. Coat, I'm disabling that as well. And displacement and tessellation, I'm also going to disable because I'm not having any, because I don't have any height or anything else like this to worry about. I'm just going to render out the base color or the diffuse texture on this model. So then if we go to the display settings tab, and if you take a look at this, the first thing up here is the environment map. Now, what I currently have it set to, I believe, is this soft one front. I believe what's default are one of these other images, and these are a, basically a photosphere that sits around your entire model and changes lighting based on which image you have chosen. Now, the reason we're not seeing any image around it is I have clear color selected. You can also choose a color for this background. With this disabled, you can add all of these different backgrounds in case you want to put your prop in front of a bus or in the desert. And most of what this does is this just creates different lighting scenarios around the model itself. Now, if I go back down and do clear color, it just affects the model, not the background. And my plan is to export this out as a PNG with a transparent background anyhow. So I'm just concerned with how the lighting affects the actual prop itself. Soft one front is a pretty good choice, although there are some shadows down in here I don't know if I'm completely satisfied with. So I'm going to take a look at a few of these. All right, after looking all these over, I like this soft one front, two backs. So this implies it has one soft light in the front and two soft lights behind it. What I like about this is these shadows aren't very strong. Everything's kind of nice and soft. And what I will be doing is painting over this further in the future, probably redoing this video. But I want my lighting to be painted in, not to be procedurally generated or generated from this environment. So something else I can change here. We come down just a little bit. You can change the environment exposure if you choose. I like mine where it's at. Environment rotation, so you can rotate the lighting. You can also change the environment alignment, so this will change the lighting based on the world that it's set in or the camera. When it's aligned with the camera, no matter how I turn my object, it's going to be from the camera view. If I select world, no matter how I turn the object, the lighting is based on the world. I think we'll leave it at world for this particular lighting. Dome type, we have a few options here. Sphere, infinite sphere, sphere with ground. I think I'll just stay with sphere. And again, come back to the... This one's pretty good too, actually, the automotive. It's some nice soft lighting. We're going to stick with this one for now. Now I can turn the ground off or on. And you'll notice that changes the backlighting here. I 
put this back to zero for now. Moving on, you can work with some camera settings. I'm gonna leave all these default. However, you can work with focal distance, aperture, color correction, tone mapping, glare, vignette. I'm turning all this off as well. Substance Painter does not have a way to render the wireframe in the iRay renderer. So we'll get to that here in just a moment. So once I have all the settings like I want them, go back to render settings. It has rendered, although holding down Alt lets me rotate for different angles. Shift will snap to the front, the side, top, bottom, etc. I'm going to Alt Shift to the front. It's rendering again. As soon as this is done, I'm going to save the render. Done. Just gonna hit save render. I save this out as dagger front. Again, I want it to be a PNG in order to get a transparent background. That is the only file type that's going to carry this over. TIFF, Targa, any of those will not give me a transparent background. Go ahead and save it. And now I also, on the side view, I might get, get a nice like 45 degree angle here. Something to show the side a little bit. Let this render out. And you can see it getting more crisp as it renders. Done, save. Just to make sure I've got all that I want here, I'm going to get a side view. Just gonna grab a few views here. All right, now like I mentioned in the display settings, we cannot render a wireframe in Substance Painter, unfortunately. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to get our wireframe from some other source. We're gonna hop back over to Maya and in my workspace, I'm gonna make sure I'm on the UV editing. And then right here, there's a little camera icon. I'm gonna go here and I am going to render out a 1920 image. And I tested everything from 512 to a 4K and what looked best was a 1920 as long as I turn off anti-aliasing lines. Any rendered image at all on a diagonal is going to have stepping. What the anti-aliasing should do is smooth that out. However, what I found is it made the lines look as if they were going thick and thin. So I'm going to turn this off, set my color to white. I'm gonna, I've already browsed where I want this to be saved out. One thing to make sure and do is image format. Export this out as a PNG again. Maya if is what comes default. Set this to PNG in order to get a transparent background. Then with anti-aliasing turned off, hit apply. Now, as long as I have set my project, it will go to where the project has been set. I'm going to just rewrite what I had previously. And this will show up in my project under my images folder, if I've set my project. And now with this exported, I'm going to go back into Substance Painter and I'm going to make, under layers, a new fill layer. And I'm going to get rid of the height, roughness, metal, normal. Don't need any of those. And now I'm going to go to this little plus sign down at the bottom. I'm going to add resources. And I'm going to navigate to where that image was saved out. 1920 UV out, open that. So I have to do three things here. I have to add the resource. I have to define what kind of resource it is. In this case, it's a texture. And down here, import your resources, import your resources to. What this is asking is, is it just the current session? Is it this project? Or is it my entire library of Substance Painter forever? I don't want it to go away when I close Substance Painter. I don't need it in the rest of my library. So I'm just going to do project and then import, it will show up. It will navigate right to where it's at. I'm going to grab the image and down here on base color, I'm just going to drop this on. And if you see that, it just puts this texture right on top. And this is because Maya exports out a transparent PNG to lay over the top. Okay, with this layer now added, I'm gonna go back to the render view and my wireframe shows up nicely. Again, I just want to have a front view. 
I'm going to Alt rotate and hold Shift to snap it. Go to render settings, let this render, done. Save. Again, save out as PNG. Next, I'm going to open Photoshop. Now this is just a 1920 by 1080 size canvas. And I've dropped my concept art in here already. And I'm going to bring in my images I've rendered out. Drop them in, hit enter, move it over. I've brought in a few of the images that I've rendered out just to kind of play with these a little bit and see how they look, see what I like here. And I'll make some decisions about which ones I want to keep in here. I'm going to go over and change my colors over here to kind of a nice gray, create a new layer. And underneath the paint bucket, I have the gradient tool, which I can draw from the bottom or the top. Hold shift gives me a straight line and I can get gradient. I'd rather have it go from the top. The longer you draw your line, the more even that gets. I think I want my gray a little bit darker. Now, one thing I'd recommend is do not add a black background to your render. Most professionals see this that you're trying to hide something in your render. So a nice soft gradient gray actually looks pretty nice, pretty consistent with most colors, with most, with most 3D images you want to render out. But I would highly, highly recommend do not use a black image as your background. All right, now I'm just going to go and rearrange these and finish this up. All right, and let's add another layer. And I'll grab the type tool. Might move this around, but we'll start here. 300 might be a bit large. I do like doing black, but that's a little bit, that's a little harsh. Let's add maybe something either slightly lighter or slightly darker than the background. Let's go. I don't want to stand out too much, but I also don't want it to be too muted either. Let's go with this for now, and I may change this later. All right. Yes, I'm using a very old version of Photoshop, but hey, it's already paid for, so you can't go wrong with that, right? Okay, so what I want to make sure and do is add my name, the try count, and I definitely want to give credit to the artist who did the concept art. So I'm going to make sure and get my accurate try count. Still have Maya open. 1162. So how many tries I've got on this? 11.62, not too bad. What I might do is, let's see, let's put this up here. Just choose kind of a nice soft color here. And let's bring the size down. And really at this point, it's just all personal preference about composition and what looks good. And we'll just play with this all here for a second. This concept was done by the very talented Calvin Boyce. Now this can be smaller, obviously not too small. We need to be able to read it. Just the OCD in me, I want this to match up underneath the concept itself. So some of this literally is just moving things around and just kind of getting the feel of what you want to do for your layout here. Something that is important is to get the concept art, credit the concept artist, get the wireframe, several views of your actual finished piece, the try count, and your name. However you set this up really is just kind of up to you, but sometimes it's nice to just uh, just play with it, add a little bit of artistic, artistic layout to it. Give these a bit of breathing room here, and I think that's not too bad. Had these been painted better, this would look even better. All right, well, as far as rendering in Substance Painter, adding a wire mesh and bringing these into Photoshop for a little bit of a nice layout here, that's about the bare bones of it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.